crap! No, you're not concussed from that devastating blow. You're not seeing double. These are two GTX 1070s. Why? Because SLI. That's why. That's... S-L-Y. S-L-I is a technology that allows us to dual-wield GPUs. At least, that's the basic idea. We'll go into a bit more detail as the video progresses. And I'll also explain why S-L-I could have been fly. But wait, support for S-L-I is fading from games. I don't care. Plus, it's buggy. Wouldn't it make sense just to buy a single better card? I don't know, wouldn't it make sense to- Yeah! Okay, we'll talk about all that kind of stuff as well. Alright, so mostly from what I've seen, SLI probably isn't worth messing with. However, I have this Lenovo motherboard that I plan on using for a couple projects and videos down the line that looks like it will support SLI. As well as these two GPUs that are eventually going into two different builds that I plan on offloading. But I thought, while I have the stuff, why not try it out? Why not SL try some SLI? How you liking these SLI puns, eh? <laughs> but ultimately, even if I can't get this working, or if it's nothing that special, I just generally want to discuss SLI as a concept. Especially since there's a serious possibility it's going to be a lost or abandoned technology. So as I set up this older Lenovo motherboard to see if I can get SLI working, let's discuss. First of all, the base for this system is the Lenovo Y900. I found it for an unusually good deal, and I have other plans for this in the future as well, but I think it supports SLI, so it's up. It's running an i7-6700 that I pulled from another build with 16 gigabytes of DDR4-2133 megahertz RAM. Now, as you probably gathered, SLI allows you to run two identical GPUs, and the idea idea, at least, is that they operate as one more powerful GPU. Setup depends on the hardware, and again, I think think the motherboard does support SLI, though it's hard to find that information. But generally, we're going to install the two GPUs, in this case dual GTX 1070s, then add this little connector known as an SLI hardware bridge. Then it's the basic usual stuff, like installing the operating system and the drivers for the GPU and all that good stuff. While we're doing that, what are some of the negative aspects and downsides? Well, not many games have SLI support. People frequently report it causing more harm than good, and generally there's a lot of problems and limitations. That being said, emerging technologies often do have a lot of limitations. But it's not until companies adopt something as a standard that they can address those problems and hammer out the limitations. But unfortunately, there really isn't a lot of motivation for companies to do this. SLI is a technology that would have appealed mostly to budget gamers buying used graphics cards. So companies that always want to sell you the newest, most expensive GPU, which puts money in their pocket, aren't really concerned about a technology that would primarily incentivize the purchase of used cards. This is why, as I've mentioned, SLI doesn't seem very likely to go anywhere. As much as I would like it to, and as awesome as it is conceptually. The basic idea is that in 2023, Nvidia doesn't want me buying a used GTX to combine with the one I have now through a highly efficient SLI technology. Instead, 
Instead, what they want me to do is buy the newest 40 whatever GPU and then in a few years buy the next new GPU after that. All right, back to our experiment. With drivers and everything installed, we're going into the NVIDIA control panel to make sure the system is recognizing the SLI setup and it appears that it is working. I do have one game that's on the SLI compatibility list, so let's give that a shot. This is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. This is a 2019 game, but maximum in-game graphical settings, and it is pretty demanding on the hardware. In the past, on a similar system with a single 1070, I was able to run between 50 and 60 FPS, it mostly being closer to 50. Here it's anywhere from around mid 60s up into the 80s and 90s, so pretty decent performance. And like I kind of mentioned, I wasn't expecting the results to blow me out of the water as this is more of just a general discussion about SLI, but this is looking pretty nice. Just speaking as an overall idea, I think the concept of SLI is incredible and I would have liked to see where it could go. And of course, many people's response to that would be SLI just isn't good, it had a lot of limitations, it kind of sucked, which is true, but what they don't really take into account is that every new technology starts off with a lot of problems and limitations. For example, you could have made all those same complaints about the internet itself. Early on, the internet as compared to now just wasn't that good, it had a lot of problems, and it had a lot of limitations. Anyone who's had to experience a dial-up modem can tell you that. Imagine if during the dial-up days of the internet, people said, this is too slow and too limited, let's just forget it. It's only through facing the limitations that they can be overcome. But again, for SLI, companies have little to no motivation to overcome those limitations. Unlike with the internet where there were a ton of serious incentives. Now I have to say in regard to the companies that aren't motivated to advance this technology, from their viewpoint that is understandable for the reasons I mentioned before. But I for one wonder what could have been. Because maybe, just maybe, SLI could have been fly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later.